Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This week's episode takes us somewhere in Alabama. Uh, Somewhere is right above nowhere. Nowhere, I can tell you it's below Tennessee. The reason I'm being so secretive about this place is not that I'm trying to be a smart aleck about it. The family had uh, asked us not to reveal or share their locations. This is a family place and they have been managing this place for over 35 years. We'll just say Mr. C and, and Mrs. D reached out to us after viewing the episode of um, the Caitlin Stone episode of Inside the Wild Side. Well, they reached out to us and asked us that if you bring someone, we want to be involved with Hope Outdoors and what y'all do, and we have the perfect place for them. And he said, I would love an individual to come here. And then he said, the individual will kill a 200 inch deer. What? But Mr. C was not pulling our leg when he said this person would shoot a 200 inch deer. This place had the right genes and they've been managing for years and it, it was a phenomenal place. Scooter Birmingham, I got to meet him about uh, two years ago at a, at a, at a hunt in uh, New Albany, Mississippi. It was our Union County uh, Hope Outdoors chapter had an event. I got to meet, meet Scooter and uh, believe me, Scooter has got an awesome story to tell. Mr. C and Mrs. D not only allowed Scooter uh, to kill his deer of a lifetime, he allowed his brother, uh, Jerry Wayne, to get to go hunting. And uh, Jerry, Jerry Wayne actually killed almost a bigger deer than Scooter did. I think it was probably scored higher than Scooter's, but uh, it was a management buck too. That's what I loved about Mr. C and Mrs. D. They saw not only Scooter's need, but man, we, under, we don't fully understand sometimes what members of the family go through. And he was willing to allow, um, allow dad and mom and everybody just to relax and even brother to come kill a deer. We, we have a great story, a great episode. And I just hope you kick back, relax. I hope that God blesses you with this, with the, the, the Scooter Birmingham story. Richard Birmingham Jr., also known as Scooter, was your typical teenage good old boy. He played in the band, played football, and he played baseball. He loved anything outdoors, especially hunting and fishing. August of 2014 came with much anticipation. Scooter started his senior year of high school. He also received for his 18th birthday a Jeep Wrangler. In September, all of his senior traditions were made. Cap, gown, and pictures were all scheduled to be taken in the middle of October, and the graduation necessities had to be in order as well. Little did he know that all these plans would not be enjoyed, for the life of Scooter was looking forward to would come to a screeching halt on an October day. Changing this young man's life forever. Scooter was on his way home. It was storming, raining, really late at night. Something distracted him. He fishtailed, lost control, ran off the side of one road, crossed the road, flipped, hit a tree, flipped again. Sometime during all of the flipping, Scooter was thrown from the vehicle. But two hours later, Scooter was found by a man that was driving a truck, pulling a trailer with four-wheeler heading to deer camp. He accidentally hit Scooter, not on purpose. He called 911 and he had actually had pronounced Scooter dead. He waited there with Scooter until the ambulance got there. Once the ambulance arrived, the paramedics looked at him closely and said, he's not dead, he's gasping for air. 
The paramedic told me that Scooter was only breathing two to three breaths a minute. At that time, he had lost lots of blood and lots of oxygen, and he had an open fracture femur on the right leg. Bones were broken and, and ripped his leg and out, so there was lots of blood loss and oxygen loss. The wing could not land because of the storm. The paramedic began to breathe for him, and she breathed for him until he got to the first hospital, where they immediately intubated him. Scooter was all cut up and bruised up, and the ambulance said they had discovered that he had also been ran over previously during that two hours. Scooter was transferred to a trauma hospital where we stayed four months. During that time, when we got there, I was told that he probably wouldn't live 24 hours. I immediately just started praying and begging God. And the doctor called us in. We still couldn't see him. They had intubated him and were doing more tests. She said, I need y'all to sit down. And she's the one who told us he probably wouldn't make it 24 hours. She said that Scooter has multiple brain injuries and they're severe. He has diffusal axonal injury. It's where the brain is like shaken baby syndrome. His two his hemispheres had separated. They are torn lacerations. He has brain bleeds, brain swelling. He had two hematomas on one side, one hematoma on the other. And then he also suffered a noxic brain injury where he went with lack of oxygen. Most people don't survive either diffuse axonal injury or the anoxic. But considering he's had both, he has less than a 3% chance of survival. And he was found in a coma on a Glasgow scale of three, which is the lowest number possible. Scooter had to go through 21 procedures. He was on life support for 21 days. He opened his eyes on day 20. They wanted to remove Scooter from life support after day three. One of the tests that they did said there was no brain activity and they thought I was having false hopes. And I tried to tell them I had peace from God. I serve a greater physician than the whole team that was seeing Scooter. And I knew, I didn't know when, I didn't know how, but my son was gonna survive and he was gonna be okay. And survive he did. Stay tuned, we'll be back with Scooter's Hunt of a Lifetime.
He's here. Big guy. He's he here. Got him. He down. He's here. You got him. You got him, Scoot. <laughs> He's here. <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy about it? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, look at your deer, man. You think your brother's gonna kill one any bigger? No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, huh? It's one beautiful deer, ain't it, Skeet, huh? Daddy, I'll never catch up with you now. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I said you're gonna be ahead of everybody in the family. I think you got us all beat now, ain't you? Huh? Well, yeah. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ because of His great mercy. He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. You are being guarded by God's power through faith for salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. You know, today we see a device that... Uh, Scooter's gun was resting in, and that was, uh, that was his father... Gene made it. Uh, um, Gene is a genius when it comes to this stuff. Um, we use a similar device with at Hope Outdoors. It's, it's called a QD100. It's by a company called Be Adaptive. So we can rest the gun inside on this device and be assured of what we're pointing at. We can raise the gun up and down, left to right, with a uh, with a joystick. And if the person cannot pull the trigger, we put a tube to their mouth. They suck on a tube and it pulls the trigger for them. Awesome device. We are big believers in gun rests. We use Caldwell shooting rests. We use uh, Boggs death grips. We use Primo shooting sticks. Hey, we've been known to even cut a stick. We are big believers in rests. You know, there's two types of hope. There's a worldly hope that says, I hope this vaccine works. I hope I don't get COVID. I hope the government knows what they're doing. And then there's a biblical hope a godly hope, and what Peter calls here a living hope. And it is based on the assurance of who Jesus Christ is and what he did for you on the cross and through the grave. He died on the cross and he was resurrected. And we, by that power, we are not only protected, but we are saved. We have become God's chosen when we repented and believed in him. God's going to take care of his people. And he's in, Peter is encouraging those individuals here knowing the assurance that God's going to take care of you no matter what happens to you on this earth. And really realize, you also have an inheritance that's waiting for you in heaven. So when this life is over, you have something waiting for you. And that, my friend, is protected by God's power. And there's nothing that anyone or anything on this earth can do about it. There is no sickness, no disease, and no government that's going to take that away from you. So my question for you is, do you know where you hope lies. Are you hoping that something happens? Or are you sure that you're going to be taken care of? If you need to know more, please contact us at hopeoutdoors.org or just email me at op.thomas at hopeoutdoors.org. Thanks for listening, and may God bless you.